So hello, everyone. My name is Liad Ofek. I'm the director of product management, part of the enterprise group in Cisco. And I'm responsible for our virtualization solutions, which I'm going to cover in the session today. If you remember, last year, uh, I was at Tech Field Day talking about our enterprise NFE solution. Now I'm going to cover some new enhancements and new innovations we announced yesterday around virtualization, including enterprise NFE. So let's start. So I'm going to first start with our digital network architecture. Just remind you all about you know, the trends we see in the market and companies transforming their, uh, their, their business into a digital business and how Cisco created our digital network architecture to address some of the requirements from a network perspective. And then I'm going to drill down into our DNA virtualization solution and the new announcement that we announced yesterday as part of our launch here at Cisco Live. So let's start. So when we talk about the digital transformation, and many businesses are going through that transformation today, we really looked and, and see, okay, what does it mean for the network? Okay, if I'm a business, I want to become digital, what do I need to have in my network in order to support that transformation? This is where in our digital network architecture, we actually looked on several key principles. The first one is security, right? If I'm going to have more devices connected to my network, if I'm going to connect to other places outside of my private data center, I need security everywhere. So that's the first principle. The second is virtualization, and we're going to talk about it a lot in today, the session today. Virtualization enables the organization to respond quickly to the business needs and deploy the right services they need anywhere with software that they can deploy, and we're going to talk about that. Um, automation is another key element, right? If I, I'm going to have virtual services, I want to deploy them quickly. Automating the processes, automating the policies is another key requirement as part of the digital transformation. Getting analytics is another part, right? If now I'm going to have more devices, more applications, some in the cloud, some in my private data centers, in order for me to maintain the right performance, the right application security, I need deep analytics everywhere on my network. So that's another important element. Then, from a, an overall management and ease of use, cloud-based management is another key aspect when you look on digitization. I have more devices, I have uh, uh, assets across the world in the cloud. Cloud-based management can simplify it when you do it from a one location. But also, the last thing, the whole architecture needs to be open because there's going to be multi-vendors, multi multi-applications. multi, multi, vendors, multi It needs to be extendable so you can scale and, and expand it when needed. So, so these are kind of like the key DNA principles that we looked at. And we, we, we kind of like looked on, if you want these principles, these are kind of like the four areas that really drives most of our innovations in the enterprise team, right? I talked about the need to have a virtualization infrastructure that enable you to host applications or, or services or network services everywhere in the network. Automation with our SDN controller, APKM controller is a key uh, elements in that part of the DNA architecture. I mentioned about analytics everywhere in our infrastructure, in the, in the application layer, and then cloud-based management. And across these four areas, APIs and extendable options across, right? So this is the architecture we have defined about a year ago, and this drives all of our innovation, all of our product around routing, switching, wireless, virtualization, and security services to address and follow these principles. Okay, so that's a quick refresh on DNA. Let's go back to what have we announced yesterday here at Cisco Live uh, around DNA. The first one is an advisor program. <clears throat> we believe that this transformation to a digital business is a huge transformation for our customers. We talked about all the changes that are required in the network. What we have done in our advisor program, we partner with uh, IDC, and we created a tool that helps our customers to assess where they are in that digital journey. Do I have the right network assets? What do I need to change? What do I need to improve? So this tool can, can provide a quick assessment for them to know where they are in that journey. We also couple that with some services, both from our advanced services, technical services, and our partners that can help our customers through that journey, either do the assessment for them or once they know what they need to, to do, actually implement that transformation. If it's implementing virtualization, if it's uh, enabling to have the right level of security, and others across their new architecture. So these are two elements that we've kind of announced here. 
And then we look on the innovations and the products. We have two uh, innovations that we launched yesterday. One is around security with enhancements we have done both in our ICE product with new release, uh, TrustSec, our umbrella services that extended also for Wi-Fi now. We already have it on our routers. Now we also have in Wi-Fi. So again, open DNS solutions for uh, uh, users accessing the Wi-Fi and enhancement with our FirePower 2100. The second part of the announcement were around DNA virtualization. And that's the topic for today, which I'm going to go deep and really expand on what are our new announcements around DNA virtualization. So let's go deeper into DNA virtualizations. Can you explain Umbrella Wi-Fi more, more in detail, what it is? Yes. So the whole concept with Umbrella is really uh, controlling the access to different uh, assets uh, in the cloud using uh, DNS queries and be able to create policies on which user can access what type of content, but also be able to protect them when they access that. So now we extended it to the Wi-Fi when, where our Wi-Fi network can redirect the request directly from the Wi-Fi network to this uh, cloud infrastructure through that, through that cloud service. We have a similar solution also from our router infrastructure. So you can, if you are in, in the branch, the router itself can redirect the request to the umbrella cloud service. Now we can do it also from the Wi-Fi network for guest access or others. OK? So DNA virtualization. So I talked about this transformation and how our DNA or the digital network architecture can address some of these principles. So how does virtualization specifically help based on these needs? So we talked about the requirements to be much more agile, right? If, I, if the business is transformed into a digital business, the network needs to respond quickly to the business needs. For example, if an organization, a retail uh, uh, organization decides to enable uh, uh, his guest access to access the network or the sales representative use iPads to connect, they say, hey, we want to do it in three months because we see the benefits. Networking team, please make sure the network is ready. Right, so now I have three months. Okay, what do I need? I need to make sure I have enough wireless capacity for all these users. I want to enable direct internet access. I need to have the right security. Um, how do I handle all this load? I need some caching maybe or some SD1 capacity. How do I do it quickly? Virtualization enable you and give you that flexibility and deploying these services across all your remote sites in a matter of minutes. So you have the flexibility to deploy the services you need everywhere, but also do it quickly. Because the only thing you need is to load the software to the right place if you have a virtualization infrastructure. How about the software license? Yes. How quickly can I get that? Right, so now when everything is virtualized, you need to make sure and, and that's like us and other vendors to protect our product, we have licensing in that virtual network functions, that. right? So this is where in, our, in the automation tool, you can automate the registration with licensing. And we have smart licensing solution, which is cloud-based, where you can actually, when you deploy the, the VNF, it can actually automatically authenticate itself with smart licensing based on the license you bought, activate that automatically. So I agree, it's an important part of that automation. And you don't want to slow down because you need to get that license manually enabled. So it's a good question. The, the, the third thing is cost, right? When you think about a virtualization, reduced your cost of operation significantly. First, it means I'm saving truck rolls. I don't need to send a physical firewall everywhere, physical wireless controller, physical one optimization. When it's all software, I save truck roll cost. Second, I don't need to send engineers to just hook up the network and speed it up. I can do it all remotely because it's all in software, right? Also, I can save CapEx because I have one box that can run multiple services. So both operation costs and CapEx costs are key benefits of virtualization. So our vision on DNA virtualization is really to have an, our DNA architecture, which is secure and open, we want to really enable the organization to virtualize any functions, security, one optimization, wireless controller, uh, collaboration, uh, monitoring, virtualize anything they need on the network and be able to deploy it anywhere in the network, the branch, the campus, the data center, the co-location, on any platform, maybe on my existing infrastructure, on a router, on a switch, as a container, as a VNF, or maybe as a th on a third party hardware as well. That's our vision and that's what we enable. And we want to offer it 
and different consumption models. For those enterprises that want to do it on their own and manage it on their own, we do it. We have a, a do-it-yourself, fully turnkey package solution. But we're also working with managed service providers to offer it as a managed service. Okay, so this is our vision, and this is where you're going to see a lot of uh, uh, innovations. So when we look at it, and the different places that virtualization applies, let's start with the branch. So last year, we announced our enterprise NFV solution that has server elements, hosting platform, so a series of hosting platforms. We talked about our UCSC servers that are deploying a data center. They can also deploy at the branch. Our UCSE blade that can be inserted into an ISR 4K to host services. And now we're adding a new platform, our ENCS platform, Enterprise Network Compute System. It's a purpose-built platform, which we're going to show you in a minute. But that's the, the, the hardware layer. We also talked about our software layer, the hypervisor layer that we have released. It's called NFVIS. It's a software layer that we have developed, but we use a lot of open source and standards. We're using KVM as the hypervisor. We package it in a software, a very um, uh, a, a small package that doesn't consume many resources at the branch. Um, it has also a new enhancement and new capabilities such as plug and play capabilities. So you can <coughs> take this one box, deploy it, and then it calls back home and deploy all the, the virtual services. It has lifecycle management. It has all the right APIs for the automation to, com to communicate. Then we have sets of VNFs, which we have tested both from Cisco and third party. In this announcement, we added some security VNFs, such as the next generation firewall V, also available in our solution. But also we announced a third party program where, our, where third party VNF can officially be certified and be available in our solution. And the first, the first layer is orchestration and automation. Um, if you had a chance yesterday at the keynote, if not, you can go and search on our Cisco Live site. I actually showed a demo uh, of our enterprise services automation uh, application on top of APKM, where I actually automated the provision of hundreds or thousands of sites. Where in a matter of minutes, I could actually deploy a virtual router, a virtual firewall across multiple remote sites based on our APKM controller.